So in these activities, they are splitting up rectangular areas to represent the distributive property. Here what they've done is split this rectangle up really into two pieces. So originally, this rectangle has a height of six, right? So from here to here, you can count along, it's six in height. And the width, although it looks the same, uh, like a square be is, is actually 12 if you count it. And it looks the same just because of the way they design these individual pixels, right? They're, they're narrower than they are taller. So naturally it'll form a shape that could be wider, but look equal in both directions. So just count that to confirm it. But then what happens is that you realize in the equation here, they write, this is a six by nine plus three rectangle. So to, to model that statement, Right, we could say that this is equal to a six by twelve rectangle. Right, this is six by twelve, and that is seventy-two. Right, you can count that. But there are other ways to write that. You can split twelve up, and they're showing that here. They split twelve. They split this width up into nine, right here, and then three. So nine and three. And you know, if you look at the area of the shape, you can see that whether or not you split it up right, with a line over here, into two smaller rectangles, as long as you add those areas back up, you do get the total area of the rectangle. And that's what we can see. So really, you can think of this as 6 by 3, that's the smaller rectangle, and that's 18, plus 6 times 9, that's the dimensions of the larger rectangle. And if you add these up, you get the same result. Right, you get an area of 72. And that's what they're asking you to do here, they're asking you to fill in six for the symbols here. And this can actually work out in similar ways. Let me put a similar image on here. In other problems, they can do other things. You know, we can split this up in as many ways as we want, but another common way of splitting it would be to split into four rectangles. And then you can model it this way to say, oh, this piece is what? Well, it's one by three, right? And this piece right here is one by nine. And this piece right here, just bear with me on this, is five by nine. And this piece right here is three by five, or I'll say, sorry, five by three. So essentially, if we add all these up, right, we have five times three plus five times nine plus one by nine plus one by three. This is also a nice property um, to work with here, a nice aspect of the distributive property. Because you can actually think of this as the product of, right, 5 plus 1 times what? Well, times 3 plus 9. Still, 5 plus 1 is 6, and 3 plus 9 is 12. It's still 6 times 12. But if you think about the way the distributive property works, you would multiply 5 by 3 first, probably, and that would give you this term. Or, you could see, it would give you this, this rectangle right here. Then you multiply 5 by 9, right? They, you might have seen foil before or something like it. And that's really this rectangle right here. And then we want to multiply 1 by 3, which is this piece right here, and 1 by 9, which forms these two last rectangles. So you visually, you can represent this, which is often referred to maybe as foil, but I like to think of it as the distributive property, um, where you combine or multiply all the pairs of terms, right, here, until you've got all four combinations. And that's it. You really just find the areas of four rectangles and adding all those pieces together. So look out for those, those different variations here as you work through the problems. Thanks.